Now the wave and ripple modifiers are really designed to affect flat surfaces like planes or quad patches. Here I have created a plane and notice that it has quite a lot of topology. It has 40 segments in each direction. I'll apply the wave modifier first. I'll start by increasing amplitude 1 and watch what happens. We start to see a wave effect occur, but observe that it's inside of the plane. The actual perimeter edges of the plane remain flat. So the wave is occurring inside of that surface. If you want the wave to carry through the entire surface, just match amplitude 2 to amplitude 1. I'll just set up amplitude 1 as 6 inches and amplitude 2 will match that with 6 inches. Now you can see what's happening. We get this nice sine wave occurring across the surface of the plane. The wavelength controls how many curves you're going to get there. And be careful not to try to ask for more curves than your topology allows or you'll get a pretty jagged wave as you can see here. I'll decrease the wavelength to get more wave crests or increase the wavelength to smooth it out over more topology. Phase and decay uh, are parameters that affect animation. You can change the phase and animate that to make it look like the waves are flowing across the surface. And decay can be used to tone the wave down over time but neither of these parameters are relevant if you're not animating. Let's get rid of wave and take a look at ripple. Ripple is what happens when you throw a stone into a pond and it has the same kind of parameters as you can see here. I'll turn up amplitude 1 and we'll start to see concentric interference pattern occur on the surface of the plane. I'll match amplitude 1 to amplitude 2 by typing in 6 inches in both and we'll get a symmetrical ripple that occurs across the surface. And likewise you can adjust the wavelength to have as many ripples or as few ripples as you want.